Well, it's been a long time since I've done a Transformers review. It's been a few years now, and unlike the last ones, I'm not going to be doing this one on a webcam. And of course, we're going to start the video with Gratuitous Cat Shot. Um, so, Combiner Wars. It, it is literally last year's toy line at this point. Titans returns in full swing. But you know what? Canada gets things a little bit later than the United States, especially a lot of the smaller shops around the area. So we're going to roll with it anyway. And um, incidentally, anytime you as a Canadian viewer see a video where an American quotes prices, take them with a grain of salt. Because, uh, <laughs> oh, the prices are a little bit bad. And that's what sort of kept me away from Combiner Wars for the most point until now. Scatter shot here. Not the repaint that comes with the uh, Computron gift set, but just the one that was sold by himself. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to see, but he originally retailed for like 40, 41 bucks at the local shop. And then I was in the other day and they had him knocked down to 20. So I asked them to reserve me a copy because I didn't have any way to carry him home at the time because I was going to work. And then I come back and they knocked an additional two bucks off because of a sale they had going on. So yeah, very cheap toy. And in fact, perfect for doing this sort of review setup. I haven't actually opened him up before, so I'm just going to sort of go through this review um, basically off the top of my head. Just sort of as I go through the motions. I have seen reviews of him before, so I do kind of know what I'm getting into, but I have no personal experience with the malt. Um, for like the two people who don't know, this is like the third use of the Combiner Wars Silver Bolt mode. And admittedly, it's a little bit more fitting than Cyclonus. That one was just weird. But, uh, Scattershot here. He's, he's been a little bit controversial. Let's put it that way. After all, um, uh, people's issues with Combiner Wars and its mold reuse aside, he's not all that different from Silver Bolt. Especially in one specific part that we're going to get into in a little bit. But, uh, for me personally, this is my first time owning any copy of this mold. It's going to be a bit less grating, naturally. Do I have all the ties off him? It's so hard to tell. They put so many of them on. And, of course, he's nestled right in this clamshell. But, uh... <laughs> Just getting him out of here, I can already tell the plastic's on the sturdy side. It's gonna have to be for somebody to, to rip it out of here. There has to be another one. Yes, there's one around. Turn it over. Turn the plastic over. They don't, uh, <laughs> This thing has to be two layers, but I can't quite figure out how that's the case. Because nothing really pokes through the other side. It's... <laughs> we're, we're going to call this toy voodoo. We're going to call it Toy Voodoo, and we're going to leave it at that. Okay, yes, yeah, so there was one around his waist, and he just lifts out quite easily. I'm not going to go over the collector's card, because really, collector's cards are kind of on the dumb side. You can agree with me, you can disagree with me. But yeah, we have us a scatter shot with his entirely blue head, including his visor. I don't know whether that's just G1 toy accuracy gone awry. I never owned the G1 toy. I don't think I own any G1 toys. Actually, no, I own that uh, Cyclonus you bought me. And that's about it for that. Um, he comes with a weapon, obviously. Silverbolt's weapon. It's kind of lazy that they didn't remold it at all, since they were remolding him anyway. But I don't really care about the weapon too much. Um, just sort of checking all the joints out on him over. Aw, oh, you hear that? Lovely. Mickey joints. Um, yeah, I've gotten a couple of other figures in recent years that had their joints a little on the loose side, and I was kind of expecting that for this guy, seeing as, well, he is the third use of this mold, but everything on him just sort of feels the appropriate tightness. Um, he's got most of the standard points you'd expect for a Transformer, other than the waist, but anybody who's seen this mold before knows why. His design pretty much prevents it. Um, not a whole lot to talk about on him, really. We've got sort of a two-tone red going on here. One is a bit closer to burgundy, but obviously not quite original toy accurate. 
I'm personally okay with the two-tone red. Red's kind of my favorite color. I should probably get that away. Um, but then I am not a toy reviewer in the traditional sense. Uh, obviously the wings can pose back and forth. I still don't understand why the wings have little gaps in them. But uh, for the most part I'm pretty good with it. Alright, so let's have a go at transforming this guy. Again, this is my first time playing around with him, so I've not, like, peeked at instructions or anything. I'm just sort of going off the top of my head. Are you going to want to play with this after, honey? No, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> she... I might break him. I, I doubt you'll break him. He, he feels on the sturdy side. But it's your prerogative. I'm sure I'll play with him. I can reenact a imaginary battle, or whatnot. Or you could if we actually had like any other Combiner Wars figures. Yeah. Oh, well, we do have one other, but we're going to talk about him in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. It's sort of <laughs> doing transformation this way. Uh, something that's not always obvious in, like, reviews of things are where all the tabs are. And I'll try and hear there's, like, a little slot that these tabs have to go into. I didn't realize that at first. I just saw the tabs and I'm like, where do these actually go? But now I know. And now that I do know, I'm like, yeah, this seems to make sense. And I know it's in the right spot because, like, the edges of his legs line up with where the wings go. Uh... I don't know if they're supposed to tab in or whether... No, no, it doesn't look like they do. Um, and I forget how the arms go. They, they must attach somehow. Um, we'll, we'll come back to that. Well, actually, no, we can't, because it's the only step of this transformation that's left. Um, oh, yes, oh, yes. We have little uh, slots on the back of the arms with the wings tab into. It helps if you have the arms bent the right way. Mm -hmm. That's one of the annoying things about the silver bolt mold is you have to have like the arms bent at specific points or the wings won't lock together. And then you get this thing which, well, it, 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 just like Cyclonus, it's basically an attempt to take silver bolts uh, Concord with a brick strap to the bottom alt mode and turn it into something that meets the G1 alt mode halfway. And granted, Scattershot was pretty much always just a cannon with some wings attached to him. This one actually makes it look like it's a barrel sticking out of a fuselage. I mean, it has a cockpit and everything. <laughs> Hilariously, the windows are still molded to the side as though this obvious war thing that can really only exist in space because there's no way that this thing is flying <laughs> is uh, going to have any sort of passengers on it and little doors molded in the side it's kind of cute you, you, you've got all the various fins that are designed to make it look more spacey like these ones off the side the wing gaps still make no sense you have um, what is supposed to be a vertical fin, but it literally looks like a gun that's been strapped to the top. This alt mode is really silly. It, it's, uh, again, it's just sort of trying to vaguely approximate his G1 alt mode, but the Technobots were known for basically having, like, just I don't care type of alt modes. Uh, we really don't have much else to talk about with this. Obviously, you can strap the gun to the bottom, because something that is already basically a flying gun clearly needs more guns on it, yes? Yep. Clearly. Uh, man. Those are some tight holes. And now we, it, we basically goes from having one barrel to having two that is aimed slightly off the side. That's probably my fault. Um, yeah, that's straighter. Honestly, that doesn't really look any better. Okay, we're gonna rip them off. I suppose I should mention that, yeah, it does uh, disassemble into two weapons. I 
think it just pulls apart, but I'm kind of afraid to break it. So I'm not going to do that right now. We'll have a fiddle with that later. So, now we're going to get into the part why he's controversial. Which is, of course, the uh, combined mode. And again, as a couple people have pointed out, props to Hasbro for, uh, well, and to Karatomi for sort of breaking the mold on this transformation. There was sort of a general unspoken rule with Scramble City torsos where arms just sort of fused into the central mass and the legs become thighs. And here they've done the reverse of that, where the arm, the entire arm essentially forms the thighs, and then these panels off the sides of the legs close together to sort of uh, solidify it. The hard part is actually uh, opening up this center mass here to break the head out. Stuck. It's always nice when a toy, like, fresh out of the package has joints this tight, but at the same time I'm afraid to break it because it is brand new. And I don't want to pay another 18 bucks for one, even though, again, that's, that's not a terrible price for it. Uh, I just can't really be bothered to do it again. Now keep in mind, we did get on sale. Well, yeah, 18 bucks was the sale price. That's why I'm listing it. Mm. And what was the original price for him? 41 Yeah. That's yeah, I definitely wouldn't have damn paid Damn good steal. I definitely wouldn't have paid that. No. Now, granted, it's it's still more than an American would pay for it, with, if you account for the exchange rate, but by Canadian toy prices, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, and and here, you have, here you have the torso... Uh, and the more astute of you will probably notice it's Superion in slightly different colors. Mm -hmm. A few people have moaned about this, how, you know, for the alterations they made to the other modes, obviously a, a good bit of reshelling on the vehicle and changing the standard robot head. They didn't change the combiner head, so it's very clearly still Superion. Hold it there so I can zoom in. The, the Japanese version in the Unite Warriors box set did actually change it to a different head. Mm -hmm. um, and with this standalone re release, Hasbro sort of sidestepped the issue by saying that this torso belongs to Betatron, and he's basically a stand-in for when Silverbolt or one of them gets knocked out of commission. That's kind of weird, but I'm going to roll with it anyway. Um, so, up. Uh, that's an obvious point of contention with people where, one, it's going by a completely different name, and two, it really hasn't differentiated itself enough from the original. Again, it's it's a bit less of an issue for me personally, because this is the only version of the mold I own. If I want, I can just be sort of um, innovative and just say, well, this is Energon Stormjet in an updated form. Be because I'm one of those people. Shut up. But, uh, again, this, the same sort of two-tone, maybe even three-tone red carries over into this mode. Um, I don't have any limb robots to stick on him, but obviously he's got insanely heavy ratchets. All of his ports are largely exposed. You can do what you want with the wings. I think they look better swept back. If you put him out this way, it makes his torso look too heavy, and that's really a look that uh, Menasaur and Defensor are supposed to wear. Um, I, I think where it sort of gets done in is, like, the solid red chest. Even if it is multiple tones of red, you've basically got the silver outlines of Autobot emblems to break it up, and that makes it kind of weak. Especially since, you know, you have, like, gray and silver and black on other parts of the figure, it, its head, in particular, is almost completely black with, like, a silver faceplate and a red visor, and it just looks so out of place with the rest of it basically being a sea of red. I can understand why people would want to go for the 
box set version over this. But of course this was 18 bucks and if I wanted the box set it was 175. Guess which one I'm going for. <laughs> like I said, um it's it, it's basically Combiner Wars Silver Bolt looking a bit weird. I personally don't have any problems with this toy. It, it, it's nothing spectacular, but at the same time, it, it's not anything I'm particularly angry at. <laughs> Although I'm more easygoing than most of the people you'll probably meet in this fandom. Honestly, if I were to like give it a rating, you know, the, the transformation for it is kind of basic, and the alt mode has that whole problem of not even trying to incorporate the robot bits that the Silver Bolt family are basically known for at this point. I think even the G1 kind of pulled that off a little bit. The only Silver Bolt I can think of where that wasn't a problem is the Beast Wars character, who's literally a completely different thing. <laughs> Another foot stuck, but yeah, the transformation of, apart from not incorporating the robot isn't bad. The actual vehicle mode on this guy is is basically a thing, and the uh, robot mode looks pretty cool. I I do agree with people who say that uh, the combined mode lets it down a little bit, but overall. Mm, For what I paid for him, I'm pretty happy with him. He's on the cool side. I'd give him like a 7. There's no chance in hell I would have bought him at the original price. I'm certainly not going to pay what they want for the limb robots. Unless I can talk them down on like a mass deal. But, yeah. And this foot is so stuck it's unreal. I need like a tool or something to fish it out. So he grabs the scissors. Scissors are a tool. This is gonna be fun. No, I'm gonna have to attack that later. No, oh, well, I don't really need it to finish what I'm doing. So Scattershot can be a gimp for a while. All right, so, so yeah, like I said, um, if you can find this guy for cheap, he's all right. Certainly don't pay full price for him. I don't think he's particularly worth it, but uh, if you do find him for discount, he's a cool little thing to play around with. And, um, honestly, that's about all my thoughts on him, so peace out.